So, are we gonna shoot this week or what? Ah! Fine. All right then, let's go. <sighs> She's so bossy. Hey guys, I'm Chris. I bet you didn't know I had a clone, huh? So yeah, let's just get right into this today. A while back I did a segment about some super useful photo and video gear that cost under $100. I talked about the Aperture MC and due to the fact that there's so much good happening with that light, I rambled on and on about it for the entire video. <laughs> So today I thought I'd briefly talk about a few other items that I find super useful when it comes to making videos and shooting images. So other Chris, cue the intro, it's time for... Super useful photo and video gear that costs under a hundred dollars. God, that's so ridiculous. <sighs> so the first item on our list today is the super clamp. Why is it super? Let me tell you, the super clamp is a super versatile tool that can hold just about anything. I typically buy the Manfrotto 35 version. It comes with a locking stud and a removable wedge insert which allows you to clamp onto surfaces as well as poles or I guess really anything you can think of. The built-in socket allows for all kinds of attachments and configurations to satisfy your craziest rigging ideas. I'm not kidding when I say you can't have enough of these things. For less than $30, you really can't go wrong. I have like 10 of these guys and use them daily. They work fantastic when it comes to rigging up lights in places that maybe you can't fit a light stand or maybe don't want it visible in the shop. And with a 33 pound load capacity, you can be pretty confident that whatever you put on this thing isn't going to come crashing down. So some of the ways I use them, for example, is when I'm shooting out on my porch and I want to add an overhead light source. I'll set a 2x4 across the ceiling beams, toss on a super clamp, and confidently hang an Aperture 120D, the control box, a V-mount battery, as well as the Aperture lantern. Another great super clamp use is for holding a camera. You can screw a ball head right onto the locking stud and you now have a tripod that you can securely clamp down to something like a pole system to get an overhead shot or to a railing where a tripod might not be usable. You can also mount it to a table or any other flat surface you have available. You're limited by only your imagination when it comes to these things. One other creative solution I've seen using a super clamp and I can't take credit for it is something I saw on YouTube channel called Another Camera Channel. When using the Aperture 120D, the control box just kind of hangs by the safety strap. So when you move it around or carry it to another location, it's always bouncing around and bangs into the light stand or sometimes your hands. It drives me crazy. By taking a cheese plate with a V-lock adapter, you can then mount the control unit of the 120D directly to the clamp, and just like that, no more banging around or busted up fingers. I actually hang the strap to another super clamp I have on the stand that has a hook attachment for the power cord just to be super safe. How many times do you think I use the word super during this part? Hmm. So, to sum it up, I get this isn't some flashy gadget that elevates your work to the next level or anything. It's just a boring glob of metal. But it's a boring glob of metal with literally thousands of configurations and creative uses. Which brings us to item number two. The newer Bicolor 660 LED panel. Coming in at $90, I feel we have another solid value for the price. You can still find the older version of this light, which I'm using here, without the LCD screen, on Amazon for under $70. These lights are bi-color, meaning they have an adjustable white balance ranging from 3200K to 5600K. They can be powered with the included AC adapter or with any Sony NPF style batteries. They come with barn doors to help you shape the light as well as a handy carrying case. I have a couple of these things and regularly use them as fill lights for talking head stuff or throw some colored gels on them for a cool accent. Another way I find myself using these is when I take portraits indoors with wide open apertures. I find in my shooting environment that I often need to bring up the shadows more than what a simple reflector can provide. 
Shooting at f1.4, the studio strobes I use, even in the lowest power settings, are always way too powerful. Now, I understand I could knock them down with neutral density gels, different layers of diffusion, or simply stop the lens down. But most times, I'm not willing to sacrifice the shallow depth of field I want, or interested in setting up gear when I can just quickly grab one of these guys, pair with an umbrella, easily match the ambient light color, and move on with my life. Boom, done. On to number three. So moving on to number three. This next thing isn't exclusively for photo and video applications, but that's what I use it for. This is a lightning to HDMI converter. What I use this for is connecting my iPhone to an external monitor. As mobile cameras continue to advance, they are becoming increasingly more present in our workflows. I use mine all the time to get angles that I wouldn't be able to get with traditional methods, like inside of a washing machine or inches off the ground as I'm speeding down the street on a one wheel. I could use an action camera if I had one, but I don't. And even the GoPro Hero 8 doesn't come with a forward facing screen. It's an $80 add-on that brings the total cost well over $350. Now, I am in no way bashing action cameras like the GoPro, Osmo, or Insta360. I kind of wish I had one, I would definitely put it to good use. But sometimes we're often forced to make do with the tools we have at our disposal. And to be honest, I love the problem solving and on the fly workarounds that often present themselves while doing things like this. For $49, that's the official Apple version. You can find aftermarket versions on Amazon for as little as $20. I'm able to rig up my phone and see exactly what I'm shooting. It saves time while eliminating the guesswork, not leaving me wondering if I'm actually getting the shot I'm looking for. So last up is one of my favorite items. This is the DJ700 Hurricane Fog Machine. It comes in at just under $35, and with that, you'll get everything you need already in the box so you're able to just dive right in. This could be great for shooting music videos in a garage or adding a little eeriness to your homemade horror film you shot down in your grandma's creepy basement. <laughs> I use it regularly to help create a little atmosphere in a scene, simulate special effects like a four alarm fire, or some kind of mystical magic propelling Link's master sword out of a treasure chest. It's also a great way to capture something like light rays coming through a window or knocking down a hard light source. I typically use it by filling a room with a generous amount of fog and then fan it around with a big reflector and kind of wait for it to dissipate a bit. I'm definitely a less is more kind of person when it comes to smoke effects. And I guess most things if I really stop and think about it. It's definitely easy to overdo it with this thing, but hey, maybe that's what you're after. It does require power from a wall outlet and the remote is corded, but for me, this has never really been an issue. The amount of times I've used this thing, as well as how long the fog juice seems to last, I find myself not using canned atmosphere as much anymore which is also pretty awesome. Just pricey at around $12 a can. See, isn't this creepy? <laughs> okay, okay, other Chris. I think they get the idea. <laughs> oh, I might have to get rid of her. Well guys, that's about it. I hope you found my list as useful as I do, or you're at least mildly entertained for a little bit. Remember to like, subscribe, hang out with me again. Are you guys done yet? I'm just sitting here waiting. <laughs> Don't forget to say that you're going to link all the items down below in the description because you always forget to do that. How many of these did you make? Until next time, I'm Chris. <laughs> See ya.